Thanks for joining everybody. All right, so here we are. All right, welcome to the Little Impolite Podcast. I am your host, Devo. This is the podcast for those who have an insatiable curiosity to learn something new. Today's guest is uh, Jason Kaplowitz, and he is the hair chemist. And I met him on Instagram, where I seem to meet most of my people these days. And he's going to come on and uh, basically teach me how to regrow my hair. So long story short, I used to have the biggest, massive head of hair. True story. Um, I had a nickname when I was a kid, Chia Pet, because my hair would just like get really big. And Jason, we're going to talk about that when you come on. He's in the green room right now. Um, and I always thought I was going to have this cool hair, and I spiked it, and I did all this crazy shit with it. And then um, about five years ago, I started losing hair, and I wasn't sure if it was because of stress or just genetics. And then I started digging a little bit deeper because my parents had, um, or my dad had a lot big head of hair, my mom had a big head of hair, so did my grandparents. So. I think generationally, and I'm not speaking from any ex, um, credibility here, but I think it skips a generation. Um, so if your grandparents had a lot of hair, then I think you're supposed to have a lot of hair, but I might be wrong on that. Jason's going to correct me on that if I'm wrong. So it was really weird to me because both my grandparents were fully haired up, like big hair, and um, my dad and my mom. Anyway, so I was like, well, am I adopted or something? Anyway, it turns out that my dad was adopted. So that whole lineage and that whole DNA thing, and he only found that out on his deathbed, which is really weird. Like, that's a whole different podcast. How do you go into your deathbed knowing that the last thing of great information you're being told right before you leave this planet is that you were a family who you thought was your family isn't your people? It's like, I mean, I guess they're your people technically, but not by blood. So anyhow, I'm getting off topic. Um, Jason is, you can find him on Instagram at the crazy hair chemist. Again, that's the crazy hair chemist. And I don't know if Jason, if you can hear me, but if you want to come on to the live, it is going. Um, he's also on the interwebs at the crazy hair And if I can get you in here, Jay, I'll just kind of somehow share the, the broadcast with you. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit today about some of the things that he does. He's a biohacker. He's into herbalism, homeopathy. He's a business coach. And what he does is, is through through homeopathy and holistic methods, he helps people sort of, regrow, not sort of, he helps people regrow their hair. So we're going to find out how that's possible, what that is. How do you even lose hair in the first place? I know it's an aging thing. It's a genetics thing. It can be a health issue, diet, all that sort of stuff. So um, Kat, who is full of hair, I can test to that for my sweeping just joined us and that is actually her name cat and uh so let's just, just bring him in and get this conversation going thanks for joining for those of you who are here i really appreciate your time um i would also before sorry jason i'm gonna ruin your thunder i have one more announcement i want to make i just officially launched photography house so if you're a photographer or if you know some photographers this is a three night four day week in the mountains in Asheville, north carolina where we've got a couple of business coaches coming in, um, myself included, and we are going to be going through sort of the business basics of branding and scaling your photography business. So that's officially live. You can get some more information. Sorry for the shameless plug at photographyhouse.net, photographyhouse.net. Check that out. And uh, that is the second week of November, November 7th through the 10th in Asheville, North Carolina. All right. Sorry for the shameless plug. Let's get to the show. Jason, what's up, brother? What's going on? How you doing, Welcome. Devo? I'm great, man. Welcome to Little Impolite. Thank you. Thank you. That was a crazy story about uh, genetics. Oh, my God, uh, dude. <laughs> like, if, if you were going to die, like, there's a few things I'd probably want to do <laughs> on my deathbed. Like, can I get a hug from my babies? Wow. Maybe, maybe my lover? Just, just one tell more me. thing to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You're adopted. Whoa. <laughs> That's so it crazy. came about it a crazy. You want to hear that story? So uh, yeah. my sister was doing, my sister had some illnesses going on and um, she started doing some medical research, family medical research. And she was calling people and we have family all over the country, all over the U S which is also an odd thing. So she started calling a few people, making some phone calls. She got this random letter in the mail. And um, this letter was from an anonymous source. Like, Whoa, there's a lot of drama here. But the note was like, we understand that you're looking for your medical history. I don't know if I'm supposed to share this information with you, but you're basically barking up the wrong tree. Um, your family is not who you think they are. You need to go into this direction. Um, just sort of FYI, you need to talk to Granny. That's my grandmother, my mm -hmm. dad's mom. And I uh, just want to let you know that your dad is uh, um, is not – your family's – your dad was adopted, so you probably need to know that. So my sister was like, what the fuck? So um, I hate this angle on the Instagram. So she uh, confronted my grandmother and my grandmother 
did confirm it. This was, you know, and, and, but they still kept that information from my dad. So my, my mother, grandmother was a nurse. Mm. And when she was in nursing school, she met some hot and heavy doctor who was in medical school there. And uh, those two kind of did their, did their magic night one night. And my father was conceived. And um, so she came back to, she left nursing school because back in those days, you know, like that was highly frowned upon. And you could, right. you were basically a pariah of society, right? Especially as a woman. Right. Mm -hmm. And her family disowned her and said, we're not taking care of this. This baby is yours. Deal with it. There's, we don't want any of this shame upon us. Like people are some cruel motherfuckers, aren't they? Like I'm... that's your daughter, bro. Wow. So her best friend, who is my grandfather, um, says like, uh, I guess he had a crush on her or, or something. It's like, I'll take care of you, man. Like, just like, I've always loved you. So they left Kansas, moved to California. And that's where my whole beginnings started out. And my dad was born. And so that's how we found out he was adopted. That's amazing. That's incredible. It's always the anonymous letter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gotten one. Have you? <laughs> uh, there's been some. In the... <laughs> Wait, you have an anonymous letter story? Not uh, so. I mean, there's always it's always the anonymous letter. It's always in the you know. This is. I, I want to hear one. Yeah. Don't outdo my story though. This is my podcast. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, just I'm just joking. No, What's your story? No, I don't really have a good one. I um, I I just you know I was I was thinking about that whole genetics piece. I mean, that's kind of that's a that's a crazy thing to string together because you you know you were asking that 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 big question of. I, I'm, I think about genetics all the time, okay? Because there's there's so many conflicting ideas about what what is it, and it's like, oh, my genes are are this, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like th th this is what my this is my genetics. This is it. That's kind of where I thought I, you know. And then to throw wrinkles into everything you're saying is like we were always told that your genes were fixed, your DNA, like who you are is who you are, right? And and that's what we were taught in school. I think that's what I learned in chemistry class and in in, in college. But now you know they're, they're, the study of epigenetics is proving that to be completely false. Like you can completely change your DNA, you completely change who you are. You can even change physiologically what you look like by not just exercise, but all sorts of different things like cellular regeneration. It's called epigenetics. I'm sure you're familiar with it. You can end up looking like your dog. You know, they say <laughs> owners look like their, you know, <laughs> look like their dog. Well, I mean, there's something to it. First of all, you know, think of it in term, in terms of energy and fluidity. First of all, we are, and I say fluidity because we are 99% water at the molecular level. Everyone says, oh, we're 70% water. No, that's the mass level. But if you measure the H2O molecules, we're 99% water. So we are basically walking water with some minerals and protein and some kind of animus, some spirit. Wait, I need to go back to the 70 and the 99 so I don't, I don't quite understand the difference because we were, I, I've always understood we were 70% water. If you, if you measure actual mass of water, actual mass of water, we're 70 percent so um you know the blood if you actually take out water from our body blood and tissue and so on you can but if you take a piece of muscle and break down the chemistry and wait i need to pause you for one second because have nobody can hear you on instagram because you're not in here yet so you need to join my live for this to be effective how, how, how do I do So that? go to Instagram and look up me, Fusion Photog. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your story. We're getting back no, to this. No, that's all right. I'm sorry. I, we got to get the media down first. Sorry, yeah. everybody. There's some people in here actually listening to us. They're like, wow. um, we can only hear you. So, so if you go to Fusion then, and then go to my live, you should see you can yeah. request to join me. Oh, got you. Yeah, I did. Okay. So just give me one second, and then we should have done that. Sorry, before we got started. There we go. There you are, crazy hair chemist. I'm just waiting for you to your request to come across. But how do I mute this? Because I'm getting a reverb now on the. Oh really? Yep. How do I mute? Um... Are you doing it on both on your phone? No, no, no. I'm on. I'm on Instagram. How, on your phone? 
No, no. I'm on my computer. So you'll need to do Instagram on your phone. I got you. Okay. Sorry, Devo. Dude, it's not you. I'm the one who just sprung this on you. It's all good. Is it your phone nearby? Hold on. Hold on. All right, all right. Yep. This hack production we have going on here. So while well, Jason's getting that, um, I just I, the whole point of this episode and the whole point of this podcast is to enlighten and sate people's curiosity for information they might not have had access to before. So um, my team, which is me and my producer, we actively go out and seek people all over the planet who are doing really cool shit. And, and that's sort of where this podcast originated from. And we've had, today we have Jason Kaplowitz. He's a hair chemist. Last week we had a lawyer on, we had a divorce attorney on. And it's just a, a bevy of really cool information that we're, we just have on a regular basis. So if you love the show, like it, um, share it with other people so we can grow and get a bigger audience. And Jason, I just saw you join. So accept. So we'll get back to Jason now. Yes. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, so you were talking about the 99% water on a molecular level, and I've always sort of knew the 70%, and, and so I'm just trying to get that breakdown of what that meant. All right, can every, can everyone hear me? Mm-hmm, sound great. Live? Okay. Yeah. okay, awesome. Um, all right, so what we were talking about before was how to think about genetics in terms of energy, and hydrodynamics, fluid dynamics, and so on. So the first, the first thing you have to consider is that people say, okay, we are 70% water by mass. Our mass, the our mass molecules, blood and water, and what you can measure uh, 70% of your mass, but If you take a piece of tissue or brain tissue or hair or so on, and you actually measure H2O molecules within the carbon and nitrogen and, you know, all um, phosphorus, magnesium, and and pull out just hydrogen and oxygen, we're 99% water on Hmm. the molecular level. Did not know. It's crazy. So when when you start to envision that, even in the bone, if you take a piece of bone and there's still H2O in there, it's just very solidified. It's vibrating at a very low frequency. That's why it's very solid, right? But you can still pull out and, and find hydrogen and oxygen molecules in there. Hmm. And, and so when you think in terms of genetics, we're constantly, and to your point earlier, which was, which was really sound, is that we're we have this process of, of choosing our genetics every single day. So um, I just saw a comment. Thanks, Molly. JCAP for president. Um, <laughs> you got a fan club on that. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's awesome. Um, so when we think in terms of genetics, you know, people say, well, it's in my genes. I have very strong, on my mom's side, I have very, very strong genes for hair loss, actually. All my uncles, and by the way, it's not segmented by gender of, of family. That's a, that's a total wives' tale. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that because I have actually have some sisters who are have have, have considerably thinning hair, so I realize that as well. Yeah, but it, it affects men more though, doesn't it? Mm, I don't know. I mean, or at least that's the myth we're told. In terms of uh, overall thinning, but we're seeing a lot with women some form of androgenic, you know, some kind of uh, androgen change alopecia. So they're thinning. It's not normal, I would say. It's, it, it is somewhat of an autoimmune state. So it, it tends to be more autoimmune where men can be, you know, incredibly healthy, although there, it's still a signal. There's still signals as to what's going on. So wait, let me just clarify. So women can get bald. I mean, it's obviously evident. I've seen that, but it predominantly affects men. Is that, that's also a misnomer? I I would say that's a misnomer. I would say that you'd see with, with women thinning, it's more of an auto, there's more autoimmune issues. That's what I would say. Okay. So men might not necessarily have that. They'll have some, they, it could be blood sugar related, um, you know, but it, it could also be the same reasons. It's, it's mostly thyroid 
that's probably number one. But real, real number one is stress, okay? So that's, uh, you mentioned in the intro about five years ago, you said, you know, some stress happened and so on. That's, that's number, number one. So going back to genetics, okay, um, how you express your stress, because if you think of stress in terms of inflammation, stress equals inflammation, that can manifest into thousands of different pathways. Okay, it can be heart disease or diabetes or, you know, um, digestive issues, heartburn, uh, arthritis. Oh, my whole family has arthritis. Well, how does your family manifest or express stress? And so the same thing happens with hair loss. I, I was working with a family once. Wait, pause there for a second. I okay. just want to recap what, sure. I, what I heard you say. So, sure. Because a lot of times, if people aren't familiar with these sort of dialogues and, and, and haven't pulled back the covers to do their own research on things, a lot of times when people hear this sort of dialogue that you just said to me, it comes across, and I hate this term, but it comes across as a bit woo-woo. You sort of cause your own balding. You cause your own sickness. You cause your own, and this whole idea that you can just get sick by your own by your own emotional and mental stress is sort of like some people are like no you got sick because of a virus and it's absolutely not true because i mean my my stress arguably began 5 to 7 years ago when and i had some of the most momentous occasions in my life i i got divorced my kids were separated from me mm. and i went through some legal battles with that and i had to sort of sort all that bullshit out and that was really the first time in my life that I had some sort of abject failure and I was like, and it wasn't the fact that I got divorced. It was just the fact that like my entire world crumbled into nothing at, just like that. And it was like one moment I'm, I'm riding this wave and the next minute I'm, I'm, in, I'm sitting in attorney's offices trying to figure out where my kids are going to be living, all that sort of stuff. And, and I look back, I'm like, that's when my real stress actually began in the first time in my life. That's hard. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. Um, so my question more so to you is, and you don't have to answer it necessarily, but how, how did your body express that stress? And you said that's when you started to have hair loss. And remember, as a priority system, hair is not incredibly important for us. We can wear clothes. We can wear, um, you, you know, we can keep ourselves warm. We have modern technology and heat and so on. So, you know, they say they, they say in, in Israel, if if uh, if hair were important, it wouldn't grow on your ass or your tuchus, <laughs> or your is what they say. So um, that's physiologically. Right. So the first place that it, you know, that it goes, remember, the hair is what you store. Mm -hmm. Blood is what you circulate. Urine and stool is what you excrete. The hair is what you store. So if it's if it's not, that's where you're going to have a mineral loss first. And that's, and, and that's where I would say, well, let's, let's look at your genetic propensity. There's a difference between hereditary. Okay. And that, that I'm still kind of working out in my mind. Uh, when, when a, when a baby is born with some kind of genetic defect, that's usually, you know, it usually happens prenatally. Um, but that's different than, you know, you hit a certain age and things start to look different, feel different, or act differently. That's that's an adaptation. So going back to the whole stress, the emotional stuff, and how we carry our stress and how it affects our bodies, because there's a cascade impact from that. If we're Absolutely. constantly stressed, mm -hmm. if we're constantly living in that fight or flight situation, that has a cascade impact on everything else in our body because of that sort of symbiosis of everything working together, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talked about diabetes, you talked about diseases, you talked about cancer, all those different things. They're now proving that these aren't necessarily diseases. These are, these are things that we're creating inherently within ourselves. Yes. Um, so hair loss is one of those pieces. In a way, I mean, there, you know, there's some new factors, um, you know, there's, um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but uh, post-COVID, 
hair loss and vi you know viral hair loss, telogen effluvium they call it. Um, there, are, you know, to your point, the, the, it's always a balance between terrain and germ and and you know all these other forces. Um, so, yeah, you can. But the breakdown, the the formula that I give people, first of all, when I tell them, I I, I do an intake, I do a case history. Um, I tend to prefer that they're n they are on either very low dose or no medication. But what I'll tell them is. Wait, current medication for hair loss or just general medications in general? Uh, general, you know, uh -huh. general, because there's a lot of cross reactions, but I, I do work with some. Um, what I'll tell them is this. Placebo, we know from the data, is 33% effective at a minimum, 33%. Okay, that's a minimum. It could be upwards of 60%. And, and this placebo is traditional medicine or that's for hair loss or your placebo? No, no, this is just in any scientific study. Oh, okay, sorry. When they use, yeah, no problem. When they use a control, it's at least 33% effective. Got it. Um, the next is mindset, which is at least 33% part of the story. So mindset crosses over into stress, but is also part of placebo. Okay, there's some overlap, but how are you feeling emotion? I, I'll just segment that as emotional health. So we're now up to 66%. The other 33% is uh, the right protocol. Okay, so you'll say, that's great, Jason, but that's 99%. Okay, 1% luck and 100% God. Hmm. And, and that's the breakdown I, I tell them. And I say, and, and, and don't do it just for the hair, by the way, do this for your health. Okay. We're going to, we're going to try to grow your hair, but, but don't do it. And, and so that's the breakdown. But the, the idea that I was trying to illustrate is that 66% of this is somewhat elusive. It's, it's, it's placebo and mindset, which overlaps. However, you want to imagine that. So this 33, 33 mindset and modality uh, th this data on this the plus i'm sorry placebo and mindset you have data on this 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 is something that is like uh it's it's not just an independent study by somebody or is this is this a standard in medicine it's pretty much a standard is that um it's pretty much a standard for um you know the emotional health there's probably a lot of conflicting and you know conflicting data but the placebo deal, anytime a pharmaceutical company issues a new medication, they know that probably on, on the lowest side, within a third, is the placebo is going to work. That's interesting you say that. I was listening to a podcast this morning, and they were talking about the um, efficacy of radiation treatment in cancer patients. Mm -hmm. And we're getting off topic here. That's cool. But let's go. <laughs> in the disclaimer of chemotherapy, it specifically says, is there a sound that you're hearing, a weird sound? There's a little, a little hiss. But yeah, I, what, I, is, what, what is that? I don't know, but I'm. Okay, it's gone. Um, okay, sorry. Okay. Um, in, the, in the disclaimer for any patient who's about to undergo chemotherapy for cancer, mm -hmm. it specifically says, like, this will cause death and a host of a bazillion other things, potentially. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a 50, it's not even 50. I don't even know what the percentage was, but there's, there's a very good chance that this will work, or there's a very good chance this will not work. And there's also an even higher chance that this will cause even more cancer further down the road because oh. of, yeah. So it's crazy to me what you just said Shit. that, that science in of itself is always an evolving or revolving door. Like what we think we know today is going to change tomorrow. And the medicines that we're using today, we might not be using tomorrow, but they, we're not even sure the impact that half of them have on anybody. So, um, you, what you do is not using traditional medicine. You're using this homeopathic discourse to help people and you're getting more to the root of the problem. Does, does your homeopathic and holistic method for treating hair loss also have the same placebo and the same mindset 33? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm upfront about that with my clients that, Hey, just, you know, first of all, vision out how you want to change your genetics. So our bodies are doing this every day. Um, you know, we're, I think it's every seven years, all of our trillions of cells are replaced. So we're, we're, we're in this process anyway. What, how come we can't have 
any say over how that's expressed. We can. Um, you know, I, I talk about this with, with stress management. The, the behaviorists of psychology, initially, B.F. Skinner would talk about stimuli response. Stimuli response. Um, and so for a long time, psychologists thought just, well, shit just happens to us. Stress happens to us and, and our body's responding. Same thing in any disease state. Okay, and then as we evolved, it's much more sophisticated than that. It's stress assessment response, stimuli assess assessment response. So we can do this with our minds. We can do this with the right protocol. And we can do this with, with belief and vision as to where we want to go. And we need, and when it comes to something manifesting as as hair which again i always tell my clients look we're going to go after it but it's it's not the most important thing let's let's make you the best version of yourself that would be a worthwhile pursuit it, it's interesting um what we don't know and it's in it, it, it it's i've sort of been on this perpetual quest in the last five years there's no no uh coincidence there to just sort of understand how everything works. And, and, and the more I dig, the deeper I go because everything I'm learning, literally everything that we were taught from day one up until five years ago was basically a lie in terms of how our bodies work, in terms of how government works, in terms of how, and I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole with that, but the, yeah. my, the point I'm, I'm making, like even science, and this is not woo-woo stuff that you're talking about, because even science today, I was I was reading a story uh, or watching a podcast with Greg Braden, and he was talking about what's called the double slit experiment. Are you familiar with this concept? Mm -mm. Um, so basically, and, I, and I'm going to bastardize it, but the double slit experiment is based upon observational bias in, in forms reality. So, oh yeah. It, so they were flashing photons through double slitted w uh, walls that were spaced certain meters apart, and then they were observing how how the output on the other end of that would would uh, move or would shape or where these neurons, these, these, um, uh, and then you might, you, you're electrons. familiar with the electrons, sorry. Mm -hmm. And what they found is that they, the shape that they took was what was based upon what was observed. And so, and so where I'm going with that is like, we shape our own reality by the way we live and think and eat and breathe and all those things. And that becomes our manifestation. That becomes who we are. Like, that's literally how our bodies and how our life, how lives work. Right. Totally. Totally. And, um, I, I actually, I have a very good friend and, uh, colleague Christian who, who's, uh, he's a chemical engineer. He works a lot with water and the, the state of coherent water, which is pretty cool. That's, that's basically the fourth state. You've got uh, solid liquid gas and then this in between, between, um, this in between of solid and liquid is the fourth state. So this is what he works on. And he said basically that our consciousness comes, our, the current state of consciousness is that it comes in on the, on the electron level and interacts with our water. That's basically source. And you can kind of trace that, trace that back to sunlight you know, and, and kind of informing a lot of people go out into the sun. They say, I'm getting, I'm getting my sun codes today. I'm downloading my codes today. There's information in those rays. And so this is the current theory of on that coherent state is where our consciousness exists. Um, and so our observation, to go back, to, you know, to your point, our observation changes changes the the outcome or changes the behavior of that and know. i just want to reiterate and then we're actually going to get into your hair stuff here i just want to reiterate what that actually means to me okay. so our observation is sort of a metaphor for what we believe right it's what we think we are it's what we tell ourselves it's it's what we tell the, the story that we tell about how we're going to show up in the world that ultimately shapes actually how we show up so if you're having feelings or observations of depression and a lack of self-worth or you're you're not taking the time to better yourself and you know 
have a have a proper diet and exercise and all those things it's it's you don't just become obese or you don't just become unhealthy because you're having poor practices or modalities in your life you actually tend to believe that stuff and that's how you eventually become and that's how i understand how that works so mm-hmm. the same way that that can denigrate ourselves we can actually promote ourselves by having better thoughts about ourselves that's what affirmations are about mm-hmm. meditation is about breath work all those different things right am i i'm on the same page with you with on, on this totally and so what you're doing is you're deciding to be a participant in your epigenetics that's a great way to put that okay so th- this is going to happen regardless so we can we can be a part of the process or or we can just let shit happen to us, you know, and be like, Oh my goodness, I have, God forbid, you know, cancer, in, you know, in, and, and that's what happens, you know? So the idea is, is, is to take the reins very early on and, and, and be part of this and, and live healthy and happy lives, you know? So let's segue into that. You took the reins of your life. So tell me a little bit about your story and how you got to this space. How did you become the hair chemist? What was it that you were dealing with before? Have you always been in this space? Kind of give us your backstory. Sure. So um, my my dad's a chiropractor. So I, oh, okay. I grew up in a very holistic household. My mom studied nutrition. She almost got her master's. So it was, it was pretty healthy upbringing. Um, you know, as a kid, I used to always trade out my... Uh, my healthy snacks for Doritos to other people because we didn't, we didn't have it in the house. That's funny. Uh, um, but, um, you know, over the years I had, I had terrible, terrible allergies that developed around 12 years old. Some, some form of epigenetics, right. A response to inflammation. All those um, Doritos you were swapping out. What is it? It was all those Doritos you were swapping out at lunch. Yeah. yeah that must've been it. That must've been the, the, the allergies, you know? Um, I have it's actually, we're actually probably not far off on that. If you if you look at the ingredients list and that stuff, it's probably not that far off. I know, but th- that was that was such a it's true. But th- th- that's part of it is you know there's so many reasons. Yeah, Gly- glyphosate and you know the herbicide and there's a whole litany of things that I have pointed to because I I really devoted myself to trying to figure it out. I I saw some naturopaths when I was um, you know 15 16 started my career in medical device and I was a wound closure and hernia expert. So everything in the abdomen and uh, consulted with general surgeons. And of course, what interested me the most was how the health of the patient affected the outcome of the surgery. So I was, uh, uh, you know, always gravitated towards, towards health and then had some other roles in marketing and, and, um, you know, health marketing and tech, and then finally made my way back. I got certified in herbalism and then, and I was, I, it was twofold. One, I wanted to help other people. And two, I wanted to, I had gotten my allergies cured to about 80%, 70, 80%. I was turning. How doing what? Um, you know, from the time I was 16 working with the naturopath, there was homeopathics there, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite there. There were some days, you know, in the spring that I could expect would be really bad. I mean, it used to be, it sounds kind of benign, but when I was in middle school, I used to miss school. And I, I you know, I was in a household that you didn't, you didn't miss school. Okay. You know, you could, there was no mental health days. Uh, you know, it was, it was, I was really, really sick from it. So I was, I was determined in, um, I guess my early thirties to, get rid of the rest. I, I, you know, it goes back to that belief system. And so, um, I started my practice, which was alchemy method. It was health counseling. I was working with others and I was determined to get rid of my allergies, which I'm, I'm about 99% there, but you know, if I have four or five beers, I will immediately create a histamine response. There's certain things that I know are my triggers. Um, and I started working with others. And what I noticed for them and for myself was while we were working on these other issues, my hair got stronger, better, thicker, and so did theirs. So I, I shifted my marketing basically to uh, target more, more so of this cause because that tends to be what more of us care about. Hmm. 
I love that journey. So tell tell me a little bit about some of the treatments and what are the, some of the observational things that you were noticing and how your practice runs. So um, I'm in my 40s and I have a pretty good head of hair if I grow it out, but I'm losing hair like right here at the top of my crown. So tell me a little bit about if I came in as a patient, if, if you don't mind, just sort of how, how you would treat me and, and what sort of treatments you'd put me on. Sure. So client to be legally correct, because I don't treat, prevent, or cure any uh, diseases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, have to be this is a little impolite. Uh, yeah, this totally is, okay. uh, well, we're live. And, <laughs> we're not towing the line here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're live and, you know, they're-, they're I got you. I got you. Full respect. 87,000 IRS agents. I mean, just, I want to scream, but, um, <sighs> you know, so, I mean- what we would do, you know, I, I kind of have a sense already as to as to what happened. We would use, you know, some kind of um, like light, you know, microdermabrasion techniques and whatever. And but also rebalancing, you said basically five years ago is, is what happened. So I would take a sample of your hair and try and get a mineral reading to figure out what systems in your body are being taxed right now. And is it the adrenals? Is it thyroid? Is it your blood sugar response? Is it your sympathetic versus parasympathetic? Excuse me. And then we would work on all of these things concomitantly. So, what's the word you just used? We're going to, what? what, what? Uh, it was the first one that came to mind uh, concomitantly, um, oh. simultaneously. Got it. I've never even heard that word before. Well, you're, you're an eloquent guy, so I'm, I'm learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the uh, point is, you know, and, and, and this is something to stress as well. There, there is no pill for hair loss. Uh, they certainly make a billion dollars, you know, there's billion dollar industries. They're obsessed with the DHT story. Okay. The, the, you know, the DHT story. So these, uh, these medicines like, um, Nioxin and, um, Rogaine, th these do nothing. No, I don't, I wouldn't say that they do nothing. I would just say that the and 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 they wouldn't be in business if they did nothing. But a there are side effects um, because you're manipulating um, hormone in a in a very synthetic and non natural way. But they're addressing, for example, a DHT blocker is addressing one tenth of a problem. Okay, so in the hair follicle itself, and I don't necessarily measure this, I point to it, but you've got insulin growth factor, you've got DHT, you've got testosterone, estrogen, DHEA, androstenedione, all, all of these, this is just in the hair. You could actually measure these signals. Insulin, think about it, your, your, your blood sugar your response and how the, how the sugar gets into the cell, you can measure that through the hair. So the point is DHT is taking approximately 10% of the problem and saying, I've got a cure all. Hmm. It's like, what about these nine other things? So I would say, no, those work probably 10% of the time, but at what cost? And because there's, there's fallout and there's implications by taking that outside of just help for their hair. Totally. I mean, you hear of sexual issues all the time from DHT blockers. Hmm. impotence and you know lack of libido and that's not something i would you, you you know in an extreme you could have gynomastia which is you know uh, producing uh, breasts on men i mean th these are not things that i would trade for for wow. hair personally the fine print the fine it's in the fine print as mm -hmm. as you as you've seen with these other these other things so from from just sending you a basic sample of my head of hair, you can determine a, a course of treatment with seventy to seventy. Wait, I'm not. Am I allowed? I'm not allowed to use treatment. What's the word? Well, I'm no, to? no, no, no. Well, I already we already established. Okay, yeah, okay. That's cool. uh, wait, wait. So I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> no, no, no. That's cool. That's cool. I, I don't know. I don't know why I feel. I guess as a an entrepreneur, I just feel like. I mean, that's a whole. I, I guess yeah. that's my gripe today, but. Um, within seven, I, I have a 70 to 75% success rate with hair growth. But what I tell people is that almost a hundred percent satisfaction rate, you will feel other subtle shifts in your body. You might be able to, you know, lift harder, run faster, you know, swim longer. You, you will, you will get perceived benefit 
from doing my program. I'm very, very confident to almost 100% in that the hair is about a 70 to 75% shot with my methodology. It's about hmm. three quarters of the time. Yeah. Those are good numbers. So do you, sorry, I'm just, I want to dive into the, the program, the meat and potatoes of it itself. So I give you some of my hair, you run some tests, some molecular tests on it, and then you prescribe a protocol. And then do you, do you include in your protocol based upon what I pay you to do? You include the ingredients of whatever you're going to have me do or the modalities, the treatments, et cetera. That, that's yeah, part of the program. Totally. Uh, what I usually uh, people procure their own supplements. So I'll write out, Hey, I would do this. And I have certain affiliate uh, relationships. Some of them are not, uh, but everyone gets the homeopathic treatment, which is the energetic medicine. It's really incredible. Um, but that is only sold traditionally through practitioners. So it's not retail. And that is always, that is always included. So I send that and I, I believe it's the synergy between the supplements and the homeopathy that allows me to, to do this. Cause there are remedies out there that, um, have been documented to prevent or not prevent to address hair loss. Okay active, you know, active hair loss, but it's not, it's not necessarily like saw palmetto. That's another DHT blocker, by the way, but it, it, you can't just affect the hair either. <laughs> you can't just, you know, you can't just, I mean, there's some topical things that are great, but you're absorbing that as well. You know, when you take saw palmetto, which is a good example, you're also affecting in a good way, but the health of the pro uh, prostate, uh, digestion, um, circulation, it, you know, that's, that's the part that a lot of people, I mean, when I say it, it sounds obvious, but don't realize is that there, you can't, there's no specific targeting. And that's why you have to be careful of what you're taking for hair. Same thing, you know, same thing with, with some of these medications that have fine print to them. So is this treatment, the, this modality that I'm going to go on, is this something that I'm doing long term or is it a recurring? Is this a one time deal or is it there is a constant assessment for this? Yeah, what, what I tell most people is that in, in two months, what we're trying to do, and obviously I take a certain baseline of people that are uh, have a certain you know, health profile. Most of my clients are pretty, you know, pretty healthy. There could be some issues, but they're, they're, you know, they're pretty healthy. And I said, what we do is basically a two month reboot where it's very, very intensive. But what I will teach you to do is cycle supplements for the rest of your life. So A, you can keep down supplement costs and B, so it's actually beneficial to you. I believe the same way that the, the muscle needs muscle confusion. I, I believe that we also need supplement confusion. Hmm. There's a, there's somebody has a comment here. Is this T Mac is one of your friends? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Says he, they could see the difference in your yearbook photos from middle school to after you were treated. I still remember your pics from your allergy years and your eyes were practically slits. So, so what oh, you yeah. did for yourself was the treatment to fix that. That's what I think. Miles, yeah. I was, I was, I was yeah, I was after my allergies. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I want to get back to this. So the, the program that you would put me on, it's it's a long term program. There's some there's some metrics that we're measuring. How, how do you how do you assess the seventy percent success rate that you're talking about? Obviously, outside of hair growth. Yeah. So I, I my my biggest interest, my passion right now is actually is is actually stress mm. and and emotional health. So I've um, you know if if that the ability to manage stress better. Um, but it, it would, it would, we would define that together. So if you, you say, I want to lose weight, I want to increase my capacity at the gym. I want to, you know, be able to run a marathon or those, you know, those are the metrics that we would choose. But, um, one of the biggest is the ability to deal with stress. Hmm. Um, okay, so again, if so, you're saying that hair shouldn't be the focal point, but if hair hair growth is the focal point to some extent, what sort of a program and how long does that take? So what I say is that within within two months, you should have, uh, and some and this is where everyone's a little bit different, um, but you should have some noticeable change to the hair quality. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that happens is it starts to feel better on your hair. I, mm -hmm. 
deal a lot with people with itchy scalp, redness, erythema, all these things. And so, and then it starts to fill in where, you know, it starts to get thicker. The quality gets thicker. Then um, it starts to regrow where there's, you know, baldness and so on. And then the last thing that happens, and this, this took me two years and I'm basically at the hairline that I was at pre-college. Um, that, that took about two years, but the hairline is the last thing that comes in. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I had no idea. So these programs, they're affordable programs or not. If anybody wants to get involved with them they're, they're, how does that work? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, de decently, decently. So, I mean, we're, it's a lot of, um, you know, there's counsel, there's counseling, coaching involved with it. So it's not just, you know, um, going to a practitioner and here, take this and, you know, hope you feel better. There, there, there's stuff that we're going to be working out together and learning, you know, a lifetime of work. So, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit in the last part of the call. So it, it's not just take a pill and get better. It's, it's sort of, you're embedding in a process with you as, as my counselor, as my coach to help me work through the stress and the modalities and the things that we've agreed yeah. upon at the outset. These are weekly calls. How does that work? Yeah, um, there's a couple different programs. Uh, one is, you know, m more affordable. One is more premium. So I set it up that way, but mm -hmm. that everyone has at least an opportunity with some investment to um, to get the answers that I would give them. You know, mm -hmm. my recommendations. And so on the on the more premium side, it would be weekly calls. But you know, we're doing things. I always tell people we, I use a lot of devices. Um, you know, I use a lot of, uh, what they call, it's kind of a, a hack night term, but, uh, biohacking techniques. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I always tell people is that you have a lifetime to accumulate these things. And so start with the most foundational things. I always tell people, if you're going to spend some money, you might as well figure out water because, uh, you know, the beginning part of her call, it's 99%. It's a really, really big deal. So invest. I use, I, I like distillation, distilling it. It's like three, 400 bucks to do that. Um, it lasts 10 years. And there's a little bit of a process to that. You, if you, if you do distill it, um, you probably need to invest in, you know, a water stand like that to a, a glass stand to, um, and I, I do add some minerals. Were you uh, showing me something? Cause I only saw it in part of the screen. Okay. Right here. I can't see anything. Oh, that's cause it's on, uh, your, our, uh, Instagram friends could see it one second. Oh, no worries. It's fine. Oh, there, it's, there you go. It, I see it. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, so that, I've been, I, I have my water delivered cause I believe in the importance of that as well. Yeah. Uh, but I've also had some t test work done on it, and it's not as clean as it should be, it's, and it's certainly not as clean as they advise. It's cleaner than tap water. So I've been doing some research on water filtration systems. So what's the difference between doing a distillation versus these treatments like a Berkey, for example? Berkey um, uses uh, multi-level carbon filtration. It's kind of a, a very advanced uh, Brita. It's... I've... I tasted it. I think it's pretty good, but you know, it's, it, it really comes down to the, um, subclinical, you know, subclinical tests with distillation. It's, it's cheap. It's inexpensive and you know, you're getting H2O. So that's why, I mean, there are other, pro, there are other filters out there that are, you know, multi-chamber with pristine hydro has one. Um, Matt Blackburn has one. I mean, I'm sure they're amazing, honestly. But I know with distilled water, it's H2O. We don't and it need takes to, the chemicals and everything out of it? Yeah. We don't need so, to mess around. So we, tell we me what – sorry. We don't need, to, we don't need to – yeah, no. We don't need to mess around with tests because we're, we're distilling it. That's so the, that's I'm the, sorry. I, I might just be ignorant on this, but what does that process look like? What, what exactly are you doing? You're not uh, use, you're not using any sort of treatment or filter filtration, or you are. Well, it's a little no, it's a little machine. You fill up this carafe and you, uh -huh. you you know press start, and it does it for you. But what it does is it it takes it heats up the water to boiling to a vapor, and then uh, puts it through a filtration, and then on the other side, you just have what's left is is H two O, and it's it's that's why it's it's the minimal. 
it it's um you know there's the minimal uh ingredient left in the uh water and which it, with um filters and so on you're still what you're at i'm asking a different question what, what a lot of people are asking well is it safe what's left in it how much you know how much of this mineral versus that mineral i don't even ask that question i i stick to distilled and that's 80 percent of the time hmm. some people some of my colleagues think i'm crazy but i'll uh, you know when i go out to a restaurant you know just to uh, have a little bit of tap water just to wet my palate. I'll, I'll drink it. They, they, they all say I'm nuts and I probably am for that, but I can't live in a, in a world that's, um, you know, too, uh, you know, too, too restrictive. It's just, I'm with you on the water thing. I, I refuse to drink tap water. In fact, anytime I do go out to a restaurant, my friends think I'm insane as well. I won't order. They'll bring the water and they'll pour my glass. And I'll say, no, take it away. If you could just bring me some, you know, sparkling water or a bottle of water. I just, yeah, I know it's the, the it's the lesser of the evils, I'm assuming, than just drinking straight tap water. I mean, no, it's really bad. I mean, tap waters uh, at restaurants is awful. I'll, I'll have a sip or two just to, just to wet my palate. But the point is that 80% of the time I'm drinking distilled. And a great way to add minerals to it is using a good um, sea salt like Redmond's or Crucial for one of these <laughs> companies. Um, and that's the purest water. So 80 percent of the time I'm, I'm having very, very pure water. We're going to have to get some links from you on some of these. Yeah, no, these totally. Knowledge drops. Yeah, totally. But I, I mean, the idea is that, you know, the accumulation is, is over a lifetime and, you know, um, you don't have to, you don't have to start with everything. I mean, this is kind of, you know, this, this the, talking, we're talking a lot about water today, which is, is foundational, but I, you know, this is a Chi one. This is um, what my friend developed. who's was the water engineer basically. And that helps that. And he's got data to prove it. Uh, it helps develop the coherent water in your body. And this is something that would be a little bit later. So when we talk about affordability and price points and so on, I just tell people, and, and that's a good, and that is a good reason to, to work with me, if I could say, is that um, I'll help you prioritize kind of a timeline and give yourself 10 years to accumulate all this stuff. You don't have to, you know, drop, uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands in, you know, over a lifetime though, it's, it's worth, worthwhile. So, I love everything you just said. And I, I was asked a question this week by somebody. They wanted to know why I do podcasting and, and, and what's the show all about. And and some of the stuff that you've just dropped is knowledge I've never I've never learned of. We've talked about water, we've talked about molecular changes, we've talked about healthcare, we've talked about water distillation, um, the composition of our body. And there's all these different things that you've shared with me in the podcast today that I had no idea existed before. And so hopefully um, in answer to that question was if I can shed some light on something that you don't know about by having these brilliant people like yourself on the show to share that information you. with you, and you can learn something from that to make your life a little bit better, then the cascade effect of that is going to be compounded over time. So that's why I podcast to answer your question. Um, so Jason, this has been a great show. I, I would like to follow, have a follow up with you, if you don't mind, on some of your programs. Uh, we can share that in the, in the production piece. Um, some of the links of the water distillation stuff in that necklace. What was it called again? Uh, Chi one. It's spelled Q I. And tell me what it does again. It, it's sort of a balancer for your for what was it you said? Yeah. So talking about that electron piece, you know, the electrons in the in the water, um, which that whole slit experiment that you you know really explain you know explained really well. The electrons are what determine that fourth state of water so when you when you jump when you jump from a building um well not onto pavement but into when you jump from the golden gate bridge into water the reason it feels like concrete everyone says oh it's surface tension of water that's true but that doesn't what you have to ask the question what is surface tension of water and what they have found is that it's actually different than the rest of the body of water, it's that all the electrons are up on the surface and it's creating an actually a thicker water. So you have to break that in order to get through. If you do, if you, 
it, theoretically drop a huge brick, you know, or something si um, bigger than your body mass to break the surface tension ahead of you, ahead, ahead of you of on you, your fall, uh -huh. ahead of you on your fall. Theoretically, you, you, you know, you would survive that. But the idea is that the water is actually different and this is in our body. And this goes back to what, what I was saying earlier, that those electrons, that's where we receive the information about consciousness. But this is actually where epigenetics starts, where we start to choose our path for our health and well-being. Man, that's a lot of information. Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, yeah, totally. Um, All right. So yeah. people can find you on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Is that where you prefer to play in your, in your virtual sandbox at the crazy yeah. hair chemist? Yes. So yeah. that's the crazy hair chemist. And if they want to find you online to check out some of these modalities that you offer, it's the crazy hair chemist.com. Yes. I I'm doing some updates to the site now. So bear, bear with me, but, um, yes, that is, that is the address. Yeah. One last question. I love to wear hats. What sort of an impact does that have on my hair growth? And I don't wear hats for any other reason, just because I like wearing them. I've always been a hat wearer. My grandfather yeah. was a hat wearer. I just sort of like hats. Yeah, I like them too. I, I, you know, it does put some some stress on the on the scalp. I mean, think about what what the body needs. What's good for the body is good for the hair. So, fresh air, mm -hmm. breeze, and and so on. But mm -hmm. hats are cool. I. I, I, I tend to, I, I love baseball caps too. I'll, I'll tend to stretch them out, whatever, make sure that it's not like putting too much pressure, but I wear these elastic to fit ones that are that I can't remember the name of them, but they're really oh, good yeah. hats. They're not, they're oh, yeah. not too tight and they just, they fit right in my head really. That nicely. helps. You know, I know, I know women who are wearing weaves and, and sometimes I, I know the technology varies, but some weaves like really are pulling on your hair all day long. That, that will, that will exacerbate a problem. That you have. So it, it makes the problem worse if you're already having hair loss or alopecia. Then by putting weaves in, it makes it worse. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many things we could take this conversation a little bit deeper, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. I'm trying to keep these around an hour. My last few podcasts have gone over an hour, and um, my podcast producer is like, "These are too long." So um, <laughs> you got I'm like Joe Rogan does them for two and a half hours. <laughs> like yeah, you're not Joe does, Rogan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not yet. Soon, maybe someday. Maybe. Can yeah. I change my epigenetic yeah. schedule on that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to join that club. Yeah, <laughs> man. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for the conversation and your feedback. Yeah. There's a lot of things that, like I just touched on, that I learned that I was not aware of before. So thank you for the knowledge drops. Yeah, absolutely. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it, Devo. Yeah, man. So we'll have to have you back on. Um, so this is Jason Kaplowitz. You can find him at the crazy. I'm um, sorry. It's the crazyhairchemist.com mm -hmm. and then if you want to find them on instagram it's the at the crazy hair chemist so um good conversation today a lot of information and i'm, I'm going to follow up with you on some of the stuff that we talked about because i'm actually cool. interested in kind of hearing what you've got to offer awesome. awesome all right brother thanks all right brother thank you so much really see appreciate you around it. all right so that was a, an interesting show. And for those of you who are still on Instagram Live, thank you for joining. I, I saw there were some questions coming across. I didn't get a chance to, to answer all of them. Um, and I hope the sound worked well. Can somebody give me a thumbs up if the sound was working well today with this uh, simulcast, if, they, if you don't mind? Um, so anyhow, I just had Jason uh, Kapowitz on the, on the line with me on this podcast. And if you're just now joining live, um, I'm Devo, a little impolite podcast. And it was a really interesting conversation. And, and that's, again, why I do podcasting is so that I can find people. And I found Jason on Instagram. I mean, he was doing some posts on hair loss. And I wasn't actively looking for it, but a fantastic algorithm that it is puts people in your space. That's sort of like the double slit experiment. It's kind of modeled after that. If you actually look at the data and how they've developed Instagram and, and how they're growing it, is they, they use biochemistry and, and how the body functions. And they base... They have all thousands of scientists that, that sort of run all the data and the experiments to kind of figure out what people are looking at, what people like, how it affects them, what's the emotional response to it. And then that's how they populate that algorithm. So anyhow, long story short, I'm going off tangent here. That's how I found Jason. Um, and obviously, because we talked at the outset of, of my interest in hair loss, I brought him on. And, and the information that he shared today was just fantastic. So there's like 10 or 12 different things that I learned about life that I didn't already know. And that's why we podcast. So if you enjoyed the show, um, please give it a like, please give it a follow. And if you have any questions that you would like to know, Jason and I can answer them um, 
on either other any of the platform that you're listening. So I know you have choices when it comes to podcasts. So I'm very grateful that you joined us today. Thank you for your time. And I will see you on the other side.